Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to some more Master Duel. Gonna be using the Marincess deck for this month. I'm not gonna show every single match I play, because it's just gonna be with that deck. Just highlights and fun stuff, and of course, probably some compilations of me getting the absolute shit stomped out of me by people, because that's always probably a lot of fun to watch. I mean, no joke, if I saw someone be like, Oh, look at this, this is my perfect deck, it works every single time, and then you go up against somebody that actually knows what they're doing using top-tier stuff, it's pretty brutal. So, no tier limits, I haven't seen one this season yet, I saw one last season, and I think YCS tier limits was like the top-tier deck that was there. I watched some highlights of that, and it's pretty, pretty gross. But, uh, anyways, yeah. This is going to be, of course, relying on the clutch and crutch. You decide which, uh, Marincess Wave, that lets your, you know, monsters be safe as long as you just use it. It doesn't even have to be on the field, it's just once per turn. It's really damn useful. It is absolutely wonderful, so you can get your big bubble waifu out. And, um, speaking of waifus, Marvelous Mavens just came in yesterday for me. I will show some, uh, pictures of me fondling all the stuff on screen here in a minute. But, uh, yeah, I pre-ordered that a few months ago. I pre-order new sets because I learned the hard way with Power of the Elements. I was like, ah, oh, you know, I, won't, I don't think I'm going to need to pre-order it. And, uh, well, it's $80, and uh, it was probably like 60 when I could pre-order it, and I'm a little salty after that since. So, clearly, I decided, mm, probably a better idea to do that in the future. So, anyways, we're going to be using um, Marincess Circulation to get this off the field and replace with something else. I really just needed that to get uh, Sea Angel out so I could have the field card effect. And I can still use the uh, Bubble Slug effect, it's not bad. I'm sorry, Blue Slug. Um, but yeah, and of course, popping Marincess Wave. I think this guy just forgot that the Marincess Wave was active because it's not like a continuous trap. So I think that's the only reason I got away with a lot of this because... <laughs> Let's face it, if I didn't have that card in my hand this entire time, I probably would have lost really quickly because I had no idea what he was doing. I was like, okay, is he going to be using an Eldritch deck? Is he going to be using, you know, God forbid he's going to be using Despia or something, right? So he's, he's basically just throwing cards in the graveyard right now, so I don't know what he's setting up for. I think he was mainly just using these Burning Abyss cards to create fodder, which is a pretty good idea. I mean... It's, it seems weird if you're new to this game, but it's actually a pretty smart idea. Um, especially if you can make use of cards that proc from the graveyard, or you can summon stuff using, like, spells from the graveyard and stuff. It's really useful. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was pretty impressed with the Marincess deck this run. Um, or this match, sorry. It was actually quite fun. Um, I've got a pretty good grip on it at this point. I think I know how to kind of control it. Like I said, just this season I'm going to be using it. I probably will make a bootleg hybrid Crystal Beast deck, but I'm waiting for the uh, box that comes out in a few days, actually, for their expansion to see what I can play around with and toy with. So that'll be exciting. But anyways, Marvelous Mavens, it was okay. I mean, it's kind of a little overpriced in my mind, because as a collector and just kind of casual player, it's not really a booster set necessarily. There's some reprints in there. Um, I got quite a few reprints and it's not like I complain about it either. It is an all foil uh, box which is a little bit weird. Not a huge fan of all foil because as a collector I sleeve every single foil I have for my binders so it's like oh dear. So he finally pulls out Magic Musketeer and uh, this could have went really really bad if uh, I had more crap on the uh, back row at this point because he used the first effect, which lets you get, or sorry, second effect, which lets you get monsters based on the amount of spell and trap your uh, opponent's using, so I could have gotten really unlucky. But uh, anyways, yeah, Marvelous Mavens was okay. You can see I got the red shiny waifu, um, you know, sleeves. I'm not a huge fan of getting sleeves for 20, I think I paid 35 or something dollars for this set on pre-order or something like that. So, it was kind of weird because I can go to Fred Meyer next to me and get, like, you know, the same quality Konami sleeves for, like, five bucks. But, you know, it did, did come with all foils. You know, your mileage may vary, I guess. So, it's really, you know, all up to you if you want to buy it or not. As a collector, I say it would be a good stocking stuffer. I mean, it's the holiday season after all, you know. 
if you want to get your kids some, oh, get your kids some yu gi as, as my mom would call it, and uh, get them some free sleeves. That's kind of cool, I guess, and some guaranteed waifu hollows. I mean, you can see the only big disappointment I had was the fact that I also got a token hollow, which is odd. I don't really collect tokens. If I get them, I'm just like, oh, cool. And you can see, by the way, Marin says wave. I have it on screen there with my cursor as well, because I drew another one. It is very, very useful. I think this guy just totally forgot about it, and I don't blame him either. But um, I'd say it's an okay box. I mean, the box itself is pretty. Um, the actual sleeves, judging from the quality of the ones I got in general, they're, you know, official Konami sleeves. They're not bad. I mean, they're high quality. They're just average, I guess. I mean, if you want to get sleeves, your best bet is honestly probably going to be going to your local stores and getting them, honestly, because... Like I said, I can get an official Konami one for like $5 um, versus like 8 on like Amazon or TCG Player. And I love TCG Player, but you know, it's nice to get the uh, get the things a little bit cheaper, especially when it comes to anything trading card related. It's usually expensive. So I'd say it's, it's okay. Would I recommend buying a display box to open them up? No. <laughs> it's I think as of right now, it's like $110 for a display box, which I normally buy. Um, it's not worth it, I don't think. Unless, of course, you're a seller, like, 100% real, like a store seller. Um, if you're like me, who just collects them and then sells them occasionally in, like, single form, it's probably not worth your time. Um, the chase cards, I think, like, I checked last night were, like, $300, but they were all the stereotypical, you know, Pharaoh's rarity grade... Dark Magician waifu cards, and I was like, yeah, whatever. I do wish Konami would stop releasing specific chase cards. I wish they'd just keep them to specific rarities, not, oh, this set has this rarity, this set has that rarity. I know it's a cheap ploy to get people like me to spend money, but as far as I go as a collector, I don't really care about getting foils. I just care about having consistency. Like, I personally prefer having, you know... Crystal Beast having a set of, you know, one Ash Blossom, and I think, I think what's it called, had Called by the Grave in last set, it was uh, Fallen of Alba's, had, um, that one came with a free one of those, it came with an Artifact Scythe if you want to use that, you know, it came with a lot of very cheap options, um, which is great as a collector, because I'm not shelling out like $40 for an Ash Blossom, especially it's good for the competitive scene, you know, in real life Yu-Gi-Oh's, where you can go out and, um, you know, it gives people the opportunity to go out and actually try stuff without having the gigantic price margin on top of it. I mean, you look at most meta decks in real lives, and you say, oh my god, how can someone spend that much money? And it's usually because of cards like, you know, Forbidden Droplet, which is pretty powerful still, uh, which is great. I actually was stoked they re-released that. I didn't actually, I think that was one of the two or three cards I didn't get in Duelist of the Deep, actually, when it got reprinted. But, you know, it's so nice to, you look at those prices and almost all of it's like $100 plus on very specific cards. And uh, it's nice to get those reprinted and not having to dig out older sets to get them and, you know, climb tooth and nail just to even have a chance at, like, your local tournaments. I don't actually go to those. Um, where I live, there really isn't one anymore. I think the last time we had a card shop, it turned into a haven for homeless people and we had to like shut it down. And I didn't live in the area by that, by that time anyway. So it's not a huge deal, right? But it's nice that, you know, there's a cool seasonal box. It comes with some sleeves. I kind of like what Konami's been doing with releasing extra goodies with the sets. So it makes it more get them all kind of feel. But I wish they would do what they did last time with like um, Legendary Duelist 3 where they had those badass dice. Dude, that was so cool. I got all but one of those, and like, it was just a very awesome presentable box, I think, as well. You know, the the little boxes they came in were nicely decorated, and they had, it was a lot of presentation quality, because as a collector, you want to put those on your shelf, you want to be like, hey, look at all my shiny waifu cards, and the boxes they came in. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. But it was really cool, and I loved it. It was a really fun addition. I hope they continue to do those kinds of things in the future, just to give people a little bit more of an incentive to spend their hard-earned money. Like, for me personally, I only spend 60 minimum and then 70 max, and I only buy new sets. I don't buy, like, 2013 sets. It's just way too expensive and just not worth your time. 
Um, unless you're collecting and you really have all that money to spare, I don't. But I like the idea of getting a little bit of an extra goodie here and there. It appeals to those people that are like me who really just, they like getting stuff. <laughs> like extra with the harder money they spend. Because let's face it, like $70 on cards is pretty expensive. But also you gotta remember it's like, that's just the way it is, right? So I'm just happy that there was a new product that came out. It was interesting. I, that's my formal review on it. I hope it was everything you ever wanted from a professional scrub. But uh, here's also one thing you can see um, kind of effective of this deck is you don't really get a back row going once you have um, Great Bubble Reef out because you're essentially buffing the card with three other cards and your field card, of course. And as soon as that field card is gone, it's a really huge danger. Not very many people play MST these days like they used to back in the day. It's still a solid card, but, you know, it's still a little bit spooky. There's a lot of risk involved. This is almost a basic beatdown deck, and here you go. Might as well use Solemn Judgment at the very end of the, uh, like, chain here just to be even more swag-tastic. I don't want this guy to have a single damn chance, <laughs> you know? <laughs> totally, totally worth it. It didn't really matter anyways because I don't think he could have really made a dent in that unless he had like a field clear, you know, somehow planned up his sleeve, but obviously he didn't. So <laughs> I feel kind of bad, but you know, that's kind of modern Yu-Gi-Oh in a nutshell. Just feel bad about it until you realize you just got to either play or don't play. So, you know, but other than that, I have nothing really crazy to say. You know, this guy actually just sort of probably went, well, I can't do much about this and, uh, I still think he did a pretty good job. I, I think I did a pretty well job on him. You know, it was a fun match. And I also threw DD Crow in this uh, deck. I did that very recently because I realized it kind of needs it. <laughs> um, because first of all, this deck in its own doesn't have very much banish targeting. So it needs some sort of extra little buff just to get things going. And I didn't really have a set in mind choice that this would last one more turn. I just said screw it. Just throw that in the banish pile, and we're just going to end the match here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.